was picking his nose. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for our first Why You Know review in the new space. <laughs> this is just basically a collection of the singles that Anamanaguchi, the chiptunes Nintendo core band put out a few years ago and some tracks from the Power Supply EP and a few remixes as well. Not too much to make note of. I just kind of wanted to mention this thing because I like Anamanaguchi and I like the songs on this thing and this could be a really cool chance to just kind of own all these tracks on, on one single disc. One disc to rule them all. These guys are a Canadian band. This is their sophomore LP. The group features Jason Collett of Broken Social Scene as well. And I was really excited to listen to this LP when I heard the first single from it, Are You Gonna Waste My Time? The track is this old school power pop single with lots of muscle, lots of melody. It's pretty much like Big Star version 2.0. And as I listened to the rest of the LP, the band Crate digs for more sounds from the past, sounds from the Beatles, T-Rex, Queen. I guess it's a little too nostalgic for me to get excited for it throughout the entire album. I guess I'm looking for a fresher approach. If you're interested in the idea of an old approach to old sounds, then maybe you'll dig this because some of the songs on this thing are pretty catchy. Even though Cannibal Corpse is one of the longest running bands in death metal, they've never really been one of my favorites, honestly. I've I've much preferred the early work of, of Morbid Angel, Bolt Thrower, Death, Atheist. Unfortunately, Cannibal Corpse has never really appealed to me beyond the aggression that they put into their music. The band's approach to death metal is is really basic. It's really straightforward. It always has been. And this new record is really no different. Which is fine. Nothing wrong with a death metal record that's that's to the point gory, ugly, and brutal. But it's just not anything I see myself wanting to return to, I guess. It's okay. After a really solid debut album and four years of waiting, Gentleman Jesse finally puts out his sophomore LP. It's nothing entirely new if you've heard the debut album. Maybe this LP is a little more energetic, a little more rough around the edges, but, 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 but for me, a little bit of cleanliness is part of what made the debut album kind of appealing. Not only were the songs hard and kind of tough, but they were a little slick too. So even though this LP is a bit more punked out, I think, Maybe you'll like it more than me. <laughs> DJ Premier and Bumpy Knuckles collaborate. And, you know, for to me, this this is a bit of a strange collaboration. I mean, DJ Premier and, and Bumpy Knuckles, a.k.a. Freddie Fox, do come from the same era of hip-hop, but both have had very different levels of, of success. And to me, uh, different executions. This is definitely not the first time the two have crossed paths, but this is a pretty big intersection for, for both of these guys. And even though over the years, Freddie has had some really great verses featured on numerous classic hip hop albums, I'm really not totally into this album. I do like his gruff voice, but beyond that, the lyrics just aren't doing it for me. And as far as Primo goes, he's really, like usual, keeping that torch lit for that old school boom bap sound. But even this isn't the best production I've heard him do in recent years. I've heard him put together better beats on that Apathy album that came out last year, that Rex album that came out last year too. Lee Ronaldo, Sonic Youth member, album that comes post breakup of Sonic Youth, and I was pretty interested in hearing this thing when I first kind of found out that Lee was going to take a more traditional rock singer-songwriter approach to this album, especially considering that he has released solo material before, and it's been pretty experimental. My major issue is that I did not know just how regular 
of a rock album this was going to be because, you know, aside from some interesting sounds and textures here and there, Lee pretty much just concentrates on the songwriting. And as far as uh, the art of songwriting goes, this album doesn't really have the unique personality I would expect from somebody who's affiliated with Sonic Youth. I mean, to me, a lot of the songs on this album just ended up kind of sounding like REM and and if you're into the idea of, of that kind of album then definitely check this out and if you're a hardcore curious Sonic Youth fan then do it I could say that I feel like this is a satisfactory Bruce Springsteen album after releasing a, a bunch of albums that that were pretty rootsy the the best of all of them I thought was the the Seeger sessions Bruce has been putting out albums that I feel like are kind of chasing after his old self just tracks that feature very bright loud epic arena rock sized production but despite all the the big sounds and the, and the slightly forced energy there's still something kind of sterile about some of the louder songs on this record to me. This album feels way more and compelling when the tracks on here have that kind of country twang to them and they're delivered with, with much more modesty, like the track Jack of All Trades. And even the song Wrecking Ball is pretty good. Even though it gets pretty epic toward its end, it still has enough of that natural feel toward the beginning of it where when I'm led into the big climactic finish, it still sounds pretty good. There are some parts where I feel like this album overdoes it a bit, but it's still a good Bruce album. Lil B, Based God, Little Boss, one of his latest mixtapes. <laughs> a lot of people have been buzzing about this thing, this 34 track, two hour thing, which I have sat all the way through. And <laughs> I have to say, this is the most legitimate Little B has sounded thus far. I mean, there are actually some tracks on here where I feel like, wow, that he's, he's actually kind of sort of rapping. As far as haters go, I don't feel like there's anything on this album that is going to change anyone's mind. I, I do not think this album will necessarily turn you into a little B fan. Still, this album does come forward with a good collection of, of some serious and, and kind of thought-provoking songs along with some cooking songs as well. And Little B does, you know, pretty much live up to the self-given title of rawest rapper by having almost every song here sound <laughs> totally off the cuff and, and very, very unplanned. Though you can crap on Little B all you want as a rapper, I do think he succeeds on this mixtape and his other mixtapes too as an entertainer. And the reason I find it difficult to do a review of this album is, you know, even, even though I do like it, I find it incredibly difficult to justify why. I think the only thing I could really justify is how fantastic the production is on this thing. Oh, it's, it's great on almost every track. I just like the character of this album. I like the beats. I like the attitude. It's just a fun, breezy listen. After years of putting out very abrasive, hardcore punk and power violence, Ceremony, California punk band Ceremony, has seen fit to just kind of put out an album that is just a straight up old school punk album. And the results are kind of hit and miss for me. The songs on here, to me, have way less power and momentum than the tracks on the band's previous material. Like the song Hysteria, the groove on that track. It just feels so kind of flat. There's just no push to a lot of these songs. Some tracks on here do have it, like the song Citizen, which kind of reminds me of like an off track, but still gets my blood pumping a little bit. But a lot of tracks on here I just feel like are performed a little plainly, I guess. And the, the change in the vocals on this record isn't doing it for me either. The, the kind of fake British accent that comes with a lot of these songs and just the, the kind of snotty, damned, influenced attitude that I'm getting from these tracks. It's, it's all right. These guys are an experimental Japanese metal outfit combining elements of everything. Um, almost 
everything. Everything from black metal to death metal to psychedelic pop to, to jam, jazz, progressive rock, opera, funk, down tempo, just everything but the kitchen sink. That's pretty much Psy's ethos on, on this album, on a lot of their albums. And I guess Psy has never really appealed to me because timbres are always put over music. I'm never really compelled by Psy's musical ideas due on trying to throw as many different sounds into a single track as possible. Get operatic vocals in there, get black metal vocals in there, and saxophones, and funky guitars, and keyboards. Placing a bunch of instruments and, and genres in, in a single track or in a single album that do not usually go together, that doesn't automatically make something interesting to me. I mean, bands like Mr. Bungle and, and Naked City have already come and gone, and and to me, Psy just kind of sounds like music that would soundtrack a Saturday morning cartoon show for, like, black metal kids, where the heroes in the show are just covered in black and white face paint and, and studded leather belts and, and armbands and stuff, and they kind of go on adventures and fight monsters with pagan magic. To me, this Psy album, a lot of Psy albums just feel kind of kooky, kind of cartoony, not really all that mind-bending. That's pretty much this week's Why You Know Review. What did you guys think of these albums? Did you love them? Did you hate them? Why? And what should I puppy next? Anthony Fantano, why you know review forever.